Welcome back to another Afterworks special. My name is Garrett, and this is Mojo Manufacturing. Do you remember when I said we'd have a remedy for that problem we had the other day? You know, the one where we had some issues with machining those soft jaws? Well, I have finally found it. So when I went to school, the textbook we got was this textbook right here for CNC machining. And it is absolutely awesome. I had an awesome CNC teacher. And basically dove back in here, made an Excel sheet, and, and went after it, used some formulas that my CNC teacher gave us and that's how I'm going to check my tool feeds and speeds and make sure I run my tools under my machine's power capabilities. So here is the coolest Excel sheet that I have ever made. So you come in here, I'll just run straight through this thing. All the yellow is where you basically put something in, that's where you type something. Or in this case you'll have a drop down. Here we go, we have our tool, three flutes, quarter inch end mill, say our feed rate is 40 inches per minute, spindle, seat, spindle speed is 6,000 RPMs, and that generates your inch per tooth, something does, yep, inch per tooth. You enter in what you want your width of cut to be, and depth of cut, and that'll generate your inch per revolution, and that'll be between spindle speed and feed rate. So keep it there and from the book it says they like to keep it between five thousandths and twelve thousandths and you'll see and that will help you get your unit of power and from there you can get your removal rate in inches cubed per minute from your depth of cut with the cut and feed rate cool and here is something really cool that I did I made a drop down for pick whatever material that you want well of these materials and that'll generate your unit power. So unit power comes from this in the book. Here is how I found the average unit for power. That's basically just a, a constant number and it's found somehow by somebody that did a lot of research. So unit power is horsepower per inches cubed per minute. So that's how I found that and there's just a bunch of constants and I have them highlighted here for which ones I use for plain carbon and it's based off of a dull tool and a sharp tool. So I went right in the middle between the two and basically it's showing that you need to keep this between 5 thousandths and 12 thousandths inch per revolution. That's not something you hear too often. You usually hear like inch per tooth or something of that effect, but I never really hear inch per revolution too much. And over on the other side, it's just a bunch of equations that were used. And that's how I went about finding basically everything that I need to find the power that I use. So from that, I have a little if statement right up here, a kind of long one at that. But then I can pick, whoops, I can pick whatever I want. So aluminum, the unit of power was uh, 0.4. And like I said, that's between the average of the doll and sharp tool based on what the book says. So say I want, I don't know, titanium. That'll change to 1.3 and tool steel 2.4 cool that's really awesome so obviously from there I can get my spindle horsepower needed and that's based on your removal rate and unit of power which comes from the book and all these can be linked together to find the spindle horsepower so obviously 3.6 machining tool steel at that depth of cut of three quarters of an inch with the cut 50 thousandths that's insane so we'll back that off to aluminum and that'll put me under my one horsepower which is what my uh, motor is for the Tormach 770 is one horsepower so we're under a horsepower and that should work okay so here is the cool part the surface feet per minute so I just doubled those beside it and I really for the surface feed per minute check that I have on the Excel sheet and I use the surface feet per minute just as a check and you can see here it says those are double the speeds for carbide cutting tools. But if you're between those numbers, 300 and 600, then, then you're, you're doing pretty good. This is your surface feet per minute. And this is a little equation that I found from 
my old notebook that I had for my CNC class. I'm not sure where this 3.82 comes from, but I am pretty sure that's just a, a regular constant that just stays there and then you have your spindle speed and diameter of cutting tool and that's how you can find your surface feet per minute. And to make sure that I'm in within the specified surface feet per minute for a specific material, I added this nasty equation. Look at that thing. I've never made an Excel equation that long in my entire life. So I was just slightly proud of myself. So like I showed in the book, I want to be between a carbide tool and a regular high speed steel tool. So that's where I come up with this and it says yes if that's okay. So like if I were to put in, I don't know, 10,000, yeah, then I have 654 surface feet per minute, so it'll come up no. And then my inch per revolution will be no because it's under the 5,000th, it's a 4,000th, so yeah, it just gets all, it gets a little hairy, but it's it really works itself out for me because I can now I can come in and make sure that I have good enough horsepower and make sure I'm not going to destroy my tool for whatever reason. Hopefully this type of thing really continues to help me improve as a as a, a CNC machinist I guess if you will I haven't really ever called myself that but I've always wanted to call myself that so hopefully this really helps me continue on with everything and of course I will put the the download in the video description below. So if you want to check it out, just just come in here and, and mess around with it and see what kind of equations I used because that, that'll really end up helping you. And if you have any comments, questions, or concerns about what's wrong with this, then please feel free to, to comment and I will I will help make that better.